So welcome everybody to the presentation Models of Support for Data Science and the Perspective of Two Libraries. Uh, I'm Jan Brasa, I'm Head of Research at the State and University Library in Göttingen in Germany. And with me is my colleague Bella Gipp, he's a Professor for Scientific uh, Information Analysis, also from University of Göttingen. And we have David Minor, he's uh, Head of the Research Data Curation Program at UC San Diego. And these are the two libraries that we're talking about, Göttingen and San Diego. So what are we talking about? This is a brief table of contacts. We will talk a bit about um, the different scenarios in Göttingen and San Diego about data science and what we are planning to do in the future. And um, some of you might be aware that this is sort of a follow-up talk to something we did at the last CNI meeting fall in Washington DC, but I assume not all of you have been there. So in this um, presentation in Washington, we, we were elaborating a bit that since 2016 now, there is a cooperation going on between Göttingen and San Diego because we found out that the University of California, San Diego and the University of Göttingen, especially the libraries, have a lot of similarities in size, in uh, focus group and the, the campuses are also a bit alike and it was interesting to see how we do things differently and how we do things alike and to learn from each other and since then we started to learn from experience, we had staff visits and uh, longer staff visits, shorter staff visits, we're working together. Uh, we signed even an MOU where we agreed to work together, look at different topics because um, we, as you all know, we, we know that science is a global thing and we have to be in this together and sometimes it's, it's very good to learn from each other, walk into each other's footsteps to see what people on the other half of the globe are doing and that can be very beneficial. So while during the Washington presentation, we were very much focusing on research data management because in Göttingen we have a, a service unit that serve, offers specific services for research data management on campus. And uh, that's something that San Diego is also doing. And so the focus of our cooperation in the first years was looking at day-to-day -day work in providing research data management services and infrastructures. And, um, but we also identified topics that we want to look uh, much further into into the next phase, and these include uh, data research analytics, data science in general, also um, more exchanges, um, more than just staff exchanges, also student exchanges, researcher exchanges, and so this is what we're doing now, and this is what this presentation will um, more or less be about. So for those of you who want to know more about the research data management that we're doing, I'm referring to the video from the uh, CNI fall meeting. I remember all the presentations were, were taped and you can see Devin and I making a presentation in Washington and this could be also very interesting. So without much further ado, I give over to David. Musical chairs here. Uh, thank you, Jan. And uh, hi, everyone. I guess I can say welcome to San Diego. It's nice to have you here. Please go spend money. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, as Jos mentioned, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the environment in which we operate in our libraries and in our campus. Uh, going through the lens of data science, machine learning, AI, a lot of the things that, that we've been talking about at this conference and in our, our work almost every day. And I think many of you are a certain large subset of you were in this room for the last presentation by Stephanie Labou. So you will have seen actualization <laughs> of some of these things. So we're going to be taking a step back and talking about the environment in which we're operating. So just to give you, and I know I sat in the back, I know it can be hard to read the screen, so uh, please do refer to the slides when they're available. But just to give you a quick thumbnail sketch of, of how we got here at the UC San Diego side. Uh, the data science program was founded in 2015, so not that long ago, uh, less than a decade. Uh, and for the numbers in the last year or so, you will see we have grown both in terms of scale, number of students, as well as the size of programs, the number of programs, the type of programs. You can fill in the blank and we've probably doubled and tripled it. And not surprisingly, both for students and I think for researchers and faculty, this is an incredibly interesting major. Uh, as Stephanie alluded to, it's not just data science, it's computational fill in the blank. Biology, social science, chemistry, oceanography, they're all in this space somehow. Oh, and as I said, or as it says on the bottom of this slide, um, the data science, and this sounds obvious, but just stick with me here. Uh, the data science program is primarily focused on education and training students in data science. 
Uh, a few years after that, uh, and actually it was in 2018, uh, the Holy Altru Data Science Institute was formed on our campus. And uh, named after our, the primary benefactor who was something like Facebook employee number three, something like that, and gave a bunch of money. We don't have a lot, we're very new universities, we don't have a lot of alumni, um, but we have one. And uh, so he gave money to found this institute. And this was very much a game changer on our campus because it really took the work that was started in the data science program and brought it up to kind of that national research um, kind of excellence doing this work kind of thing. Um, and so it cross cuts a much wider swath of the university than you find just in the classrooms. Um, and does a lot of support for both, not just education, but also research, both fundamental as well as the more high-end things. Um, and in contrast to the program, it's generally focused more on advancing the field of data science through research and innovation. So we've got kind of these two different threads inter intersecting with each other on campus. Uh, and then we, lastly, we have the library. Uh, this is Stephanie for the, I don't know if she's even still in the room anymore, but um, Data science librarian, not coincidentally, hired right at about the same time. And at, at not just hiring her, but a lot of other services in the library uh, were either started or increased at that time. So some of these will be kind of familiar to us in this space. Data, data and GIS lab, a wide range of services, which I'll be getting to in the next slides. Uh, we've begun bringing student data into our library digital collections. I'll also be touching on that in just a second. Um, and as Stephanie mentioned, they have been doing a lot of research on what it means to be kind of a library and a repository in this space. Um, I do encourage you when the paper comes out to uh, read it that she referenced. Um, and I, I wanted to emphasize again this kind of point in the library, and this will come, become very interesting when Bela starts to talk. Um, we've really been focused on this kind of external facing, assisting students and faculty where appropriate, being in the classroom where appropriate. We haven't really taken a lot of this on board inward, right? And this is a place a lot of organizations are asking now, like, can't we do a lot of these efficiency scaling and understanding and new processes internally? So we're kind of right at this point of asking some interesting questions and looking at some interesting purposes. Um, the next couple slides are an eye chart. I'm not even gonna bother reading these, um, but I just wanted to give you a sense of the kind of work that we have been doing in the library in support of students. So first off, just a quick gloss on the kind of interactions we have. And I, I think you'll see they range everything from literally one-on-ones to sitting in huge classrooms of students. Uh, some of it is our long-term relationships, working, supporting people through projects, capstone projects, graduate work, all those kinds of things. So we've really uh, spanned the gamut in terms of how we support students here. We've created a lot of the kind of materials I think you would expect, ephemera, uh, going forward. Uh, we've got libguides. We uh, help you either run or help sponsor a lot of events on campus, um, uh, working through different uh, programs and uh, project student groups on campus. We have uh, heavily support for a lot of our data science groups on campus. Um, and we've also been working on, it, as you saw in the uh, last presentation, I'll be talking on uh, just a moment, uh, actually bringing student data, data data science student, there's a lot of data in that word, data science student data into our data repository. <laughs> I was gonna get there. Um, and then lastly, and this is definitely emerging um, as the new graduate programs are spinning up, not just data science, but as I said, computational biology, fill in the blank. Uh, we're trying to navigate what does that space even begin to look like? Uh, because these are rapidly developing programs um, it doesn't say it in here, I think it was on one of the earlier slides. Uh, one of our data science graduate programs is the very first one at UCSD that can be vir fully virtual. So there's a lot of experimentation in this space happening, things like that. Um, I also wanted to talk, uh, and this will be my last slide, but this is kind of one of our big next steps, is uh, working with our repository. Uh, so we do have a data repository on campus that manages, well, that will accept any kind of data. Uh, it's a generalist repository for our campus. Um, what will it mean to actually bring some of these data science projects, data outputs, uh, things people are using in the classroom into the repository, and hopefully leverage some of those best practices that um, our, <laughs> our librarians are researching about and finding. So this, this is gonna be the way that we begin to get in and implement uh, some of these new steps. 
Um, but I just wanted to highlight this, this new program called an Educational Data Set Service. Uh, this is the library working hand in hand with both our campus research IT, who manages a large machine learning platform that all the students use for their classroom analysis and running code and all those kinds of things, working um, with them as providers, but then also working with uh, our researchers and our faculty in the classroom to say, what do your students need? Where are the gaps? What are they not understanding? And uh, there was a question in the last session about kind of that education of students for creating, using, saving, citing, all those kinds of things. This is gonna be how we, the library begins to address this, that we say, okay, on the one hand, we'll take a bunch of data and make it available and tag it appropriately, but we'd love to work with students going forward so that they can learn how to create the tags and they can learn how to do the metadata, they, they can learn about licenses and all those kinds of things. Um, so this is actually a pretty exciting development for us, and I think it's gonna be the first step in some of the things you're gonna see starting on the next slide where we're gonna begin to dip our toes into what does it mean internally to take on board some of these processes? And maybe even what does it, make, it mean to begin to work with these students directly in the library, these data science students of all different levels? Um, so again, that was a very quick gloss. I'm happy to answer questions either after or after the presentation. And then I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Dr. Gipp. Thanks, David. Um, hello, it's actually my first time here at the conference. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Bela Gipp, and I'm from the University of Göttingen. And in Göttingen, the, the university library and the university, they work very closely together. And I'm a faculty member of the computer science department, but actually, for example, our offices are in the state library. So although we are computer scientists in, in our group, we yeah, we work very closely with the library, uh, of course also with, with Jan, um, who's uh, working there in the research department, and we have joint projects. And yeah, I'm very thankful that we have now this collaboration also with um, yeah, David and his team, and um, working together on interesting research projects, mostly related to libraries and establishing this um, exchange program. So in case you don't know, Göttingen, I mean, it's uh, not the probably most of you haven't really heard of it, I don't know. So it's in the very center of Germany, um, as you see on the Google Maps. So it's really, I think, Jan, maybe you know, I think this is only a few kilometers away from the most yeah. central point in, 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 in Germany. And yeah, on the right you can, can see the library and we are located in the, actually in the historical building. And that's um, our research group and in the next few slides, I'd like to give a brief overview of what we're working on. So the core research areas are information retrieval, so finding relevant information, kind of what, what Google is doing. Then natural language processing is a research field that is getting more and more important for us. I would say most of our doctoral students now work on natural language processing, and we also work on using blockchain technology for archival purposes. So yeah, the foundations are data science, artificial intelligence, and information visualization. So in natural language processing, we have various different projects, and I'm, I'm very curious what actually the first project is maybe where we collaborate, but I mean, you all know ChatGPT and um, all the possibilities that large language models offer, and I'm sure that there will be some really interesting areas to collaborate. Um, another field, as I said, are literature recommendations. So we develop recommender systems for literature and developed in this uh, area also some, some algorithms and have a, a system to evaluate our algorithms. And another area is plagiarism detection, although I have to say I think this is soon an area of the past because with generative AI, uh, the whole yeah, idea of plagiarism I think will just change. No one will just copy paste, you will use AI to, to rewrite something. And, um, but also identifying texts that were generated using AI is something that uh, we work on, although I'm not even sure whether that's something that we will need in the future, because I think you shouldn't forbid the students to work with um, systems that yeah, use generative AI to, to write text. So it's a, it's a difficult question. 
And I, I don't really have an answer for that at the moment. Another field is um, intellectual property protection. And we developed some uh, systems that use blockchains, distributed ledger technology, to embed timestamps in these blockchains, which can also be relevant for, for archives and digital libraries. And we work on analyzing news. So for example, um, that you can identify media bias and, and similar things. So these are the main research areas. And the last one, math information retrieval. So maybe if you, I mean, I'm sure you all have used uh, Wikipedia. Whenever you see a formula displayed within Wikipedia, that's actually uh, developed in, in our group, this um, representation. So we want to make sure that you don't just have an image with a formula, but actually the, the, the formula can be embedded. And that's something um, one of my group members actually developed, and that is now rolled out in, in Wikipedia worldwide. So yeah, many interesting areas for, for research. And um, I just wanted to give this short overview to show what we are working on. And um, also, very important, um, we, as we plan to have this research and student exchange, that, uh, Jan, do you want to no, you, present you, you, this slide? OK, anyways, so we have this, uh, the idea that students from UC San Diego come to Göttingen and the other way around. And um, they're very interesting possibilities, but not just for students, but also for um, yeah, staff exchange. And I don't want to go into all the details of the programs that also financially support that, because, of course, <laughs> it also costs money. But um, you can see here a barcode, and then you can download the slides with the links. So they're interesting programs from the DAAD, which is the German Academic Exchange Organization. And they have some really interesting funding possibilities for that. So yeah, if you are interested or know someone, um, please let them know. And I think then I hand over to Jan again. Thank you. So as I said, um, we now look back at um, eight years of, of cooperation. And um, so what we found out in the, um, in, in the first phase, that was, of course, very heavily disrupted by the COVID pandemic, where we did not meet as much as we wanted to. But um, we have benefited very much from, from learning about each other, because we saw that um, libraries all over the world, they face very, very similar issues. And of course, the way that the libraries in the different countries and different domains deal with these issues are different. Of, of course, relying on the, on the individual culture, in the, on the funding scheme, on the financial situation of the library. And, um, but the general questions are, are all the same. And we found out that it's very helpful to a, see what are other people doing, and also sometimes invite people from other communities, especially other libraries, as critical friends, and let them have a look at what you're doing. So we had colleagues from San Diego being at Göttingen, and we showed them this is the way we do things, and what do you think about that? And that sometimes gives good insights from, from the external perspective, and vice versa. We came to San Diego and looked at the way they were doing things. And this was very beneficial with a clear focus on services, library services, research data management services, research data management infrastructures. And now as a next step, we saw that um, this, this whole cooperation started from the libraries, but it's now slowly spread into the whole universities. So it's no longer just the University of Göttingen Library and the UCSD Library, but it's now the whole universities, the whole campuses that have an interest in learning from, from, from the other partner around the globe. So uh, actually focusing on data science, firstly on the different topics that Bela was presenting as actual topics where his team can work with, with David's team and also the, the folks at, the, at, at UCSD from the data science division and see if there is interesting uh, topics for, for joint proposals. The other thing that we wanted to do is um, also help our cooperation by having individual exchanges and um, these are of course, research exchanges, but as Bela presented, there are nice funding opportunities for students. So we actually have good funding opportunities for California students to come to Göttingen and vice versa. And it, um, it actually fits a very nice gap and it's very um, the right thing to do because as I learned in the master program data science for the uh, UCSD students, uh, in the first year of their master program, they actually have to make a project. 
and it's mandatory. And um, Bela's team and we at the library, we have a lot of projects where people actually can work. And of course, we also invite Californian students to come and work with us and vice versa. Our students are encouraged to come to, um, to go abroad for a semester into a different country. And they have interest to, of course, going to California. So we believe that with this exchange of students, we will bring our cooperation to, to the next level. And interestingly, there are funding opportunities by the German government for that. So that is something that we are now very much looking into. And hopefully, um, 24, 25, we will have the first students uh, being sent across the globe to the different country. And then, who knows, next spring CNI, or maybe the fall CNI this time, uh, we can give you an update on how it has been and what has happened in the time between. So that's all from us, and we very much welcome you to give us some questions and give us some statements and see what you're thinking about. So, questions, please. I know there's a refreshment break, but I'm not quite sure <laughs> if they already have... Well, I think they will only start serving in eight minutes. So. Uh, so uh, the the first part of your question, how we, how and when and, and why we met each other, interestingly enough, was at a CNI meeting. Ooh, all right, I know. Um, in in DC seven or eight years ago, uh, actually, it was the the previous library director, uh, both from Hostmann uh, at Göttingen and Jan were there, and it was literally the standard CNI afterwards grabbing a beer and saying, "Oh, you're working on that. Well, we're working on that too. We should work on that together." So it was literally as simple as that. Yeah, right. Um, but at the same time, I think it was the group being open to not just having those discussions, but actually wanting to do something. You know, I think that's something we're big fans of is start. <laughs> start. Um, because what, just as an example, what we have found out even more recently in this collaboration is uh, on the UCSD side, as we've been exploring, for instance, these new student exchanges, there's a ton of funding opportunities out there, right? Both for students and for faculty and researchers that if we hadn't even begun to ask the question, no one was gonna tell us about. And it wasn't until we could go and say, oh, we're interested in working on with this group on these topics, on, on these special things. And the university said, oh yeah, that would make us look better as a university, so yeah, please go do that. Um, so I think from our vantage point, that was a big piece of it. And in terms of um, how can you get these connections, um, of course there is no one size fits all solution to that, but I would say generally, um, if you attend international conferences, you, as David said, you usually network and then you meet other people. And, uh, and I, think you, I think most of you will have contact with some colleagues from abroad and where you share just interest in, in the same topics. And then it's a pretty small step from widening this up and saying that why don't we like, get our institutions evolved a bit? And I think the most crucial part, but please correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have to convince the superiors in your institutions to be actually open-minded to invite external people and take them serious enough that listen to listen to what they are saying, because I think that's the critical part. Um, I, I know that m many institutions like to do the way the things they do things and then coming up with the idea let's invite these colleagues from that country come over to spend for two weeks and we show them what we're doing and and they can give us an input on that and then they tell us what they're doing um i think that's the start it needs to come up with ideas where you can work together but but being willing to to invite the people and listen to what they're saying i think that's that's the most crucial step but apart from that the i think inviting a, a visiting researcher over for two weeks, come to our place, um, learn what we're doing. 
um, is, is pretty straightforward. And I would say most researchers have some sort of funding for that sort of trip. So it's just not many money involved in that. And then you can do the next steps and next steps. Yeah, okay. More questions? Okay, I, it seems we've blown you away. Right? <laughs> Of course, we're proud of that, but um, so, and please, uh, we're here, so don't hesitate, come to us, speak with us directly if there are some of the topics of Bela that you were, would have learned more about, um, if you want to just exchange some ideas, come over to us, and we're here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.